anyway, yeah. So like, they're not even like really friends or anything like that. So she, so what she does is she goes, and uh, I'm going to Tim's place now just to kind of give you. I think it's I think it's worth showing. So anyway, they're not like really friends or anything like that. And um, so she goes and. Uh, She goes and she buys she goes to, she buys these really expensive plane tickets and even pays for like the the hotel and crap like that. I mean, I I pitched in for the hotel, but this other guy nothing, and uh, and and this is all an attempt to kind of like basically like get personal time with me and like get and get these um and get these returns on her on her actions and everything like that. Like you know like I don't know, it, it really was like that. And it got pretty bad towards the end, to the point where, like, I pretty much had to stop seeing her for a little bit. I mean, it, it didn't end badly, per se, but, it, it, you know, she she was a really, she really needed somebody, and she was just going through people uh, in this group uh, a lot. And I hope she never hears this, but she was just trying, she was trying to find love in everybody around her. And then at the end, the worst part of this is, like, at the end of this, she's like, oh, I'm done with bronies and everything like that. After, you know, like, after, like, basically four people turning her down because she's just basically kind of psychotic all the time. <laughs> just these different... But, yeah, I mean, okay, like, but if you give her what she wants, she's fine. You just have to be that laid back. And there, and she ended up finding a guy who's just super laid back. And, you know, anyway, so, like, um... And and then the okay and the funny thing is the guy that she finds is from that brony group so how could she be done with bronies if she's you know I don't know she's really freaking like that's the thing is she's one of those people that just blames everyone else instead of actually ever really reflecting on the decisions she's made and and that's one of the things that really annoyed me about her is that she would always blame every all of her problems and all these different things and everything else and I'm just like you know. That's just not how I operate. I mean, pretty much the first person I look at when something goes wrong is I, I, I assess the the only sure thing I know, and that's myself for the most part. You know what I mean? And and then I'll start uh, looking for something else. And I, and, you know, at what at some point you have to decide how much, what proportionately, how much of the the bad situation that you came upon uh, was your fault, how much of it is fixable, and blah blah blah. Um, and uh, she just has absolutely no self-analytical ability, in my opinion. And it was really, really obnoxious. And, it, and that was pretty much the major reason I couldn't be with her. Anyway, so she goes ahead and uh, and buys these tickets and brings them to this convention. And you know, and I'm really excited about this action. I'm getting excited about that. And and I, did, and, you know, and this came. Uh, and here's where the second part, like I said, the second part of my story comes, is that. Uh, so I had a really uh, touching moment with Nicole Oliver, the voice actress of Princess Celestia, when I presented her a drawing at the Brony convention um, of one of her characters, uh, Princess Celestia, obviously. Um, she also voices Cheer Lee. And uh, she, uh, you know, and she gave me... And the reason why this drawing was really important is because... No, I I just started knowing. That's my cousin. Don't interrupt. Anyway, um, so I went ahead and uh, and uh, you know and I and I uh, gave her this drawing and um, I'll tell you kind of the story of why probably why she did this. But she got up and she gave me a big hug. I mean, I wasn't even I didn't even ask for anything. I was walking back and she got up and gave me a big hug in front of you know the uh, like the t- the seven hundred people there in the convention room as well as the um you know, uh, the, the 2,000 some odd people or 1,500 people that are watching on live stream and all that kind of stuff, and that was just really, really special. That was really, you know, like, and there's a reason why I gave her that drawing. It wasn't for any, you know, I mean, because basically I, uh, when I, when I found out I'm going to the convention, I was like, okay, I gotta do something special. I get, I admire these people in these, this show way too much that I gotta do something. So, like, it's like, what's the only thing I can ever really give that's of any kind of, you know, uh, not really worth, but something that people can take away with them and appreciate. And it's art. But I hadn't made art for like a year at that point, and finding motivations for art be- has basically become like, uh, a, it's not possible for me, <laughs> like, uh, at that point in time. And, um, and I just really didn't see the point of really pursuing that. And, and I'm not, well, I'm not trying to yank, I mean, you know, like, uh, toot my own horn or anything. I'm not a bad artist by any means. It's just, it's a lot of effort for me to, uh, do what I do, because I do these highly, uh, refined pencil drawings for, um, I mean, and, and 
on a level that's like like as far as gradients and go and smoothness of shading and stuff like that, it's uh, it's on a level um, semi comparable to uh, to digital, and so that just takes a tremendous amount of time. I just finished a drawing of Applejack and Rainbow Dash that took me probably sixty plus hours to do. Uh, you know, that's a that's a huge time investment, and that's usually over months. And I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll just make them make all because the, who was showing up to the convention? We had Nicole Oliver, um, then we had Ashley Ball, which does Rainbow uh, Rainbow Dash and Applejack, and then we have um, and then we have Andrea Libman, which does Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy, and uh, and I was I you know I so, said, okay, maybe I'll just make them all some sketches, something like that. But then you know, being the perfectionist that I am, and if I really want to make this a special thing, I, I can't just I can't just, uh, you know, give them sketches. That would just be kind of... I mean, maybe, you know, I don't know what I expected to do with it or something like that. But, um... So I, I ended up, uh... You know, I, I ended up basically deciding that I had to just do one. And, um... And the reason I chose Nicole Oliver is because there was a time... This just came... This came right on the heels of an incredibly, an insanely bad interview she got on, like... I would forget, like, they're called, like... Friendship is madness. Or something. They're probably not even around anymore. It's like this group. Basically, they basically just called her up on Skype and just round tabled the thing, and just asking random questions like, "What kind of tree would you be if you could be a tree?" That was the first question she got, and and she's like, "What? Uh, I guess I'd be, I guess I'd be a weeping willow, which is funny as hell because that's like my favorite tree." So I was like, "Ah, you even answered the best question the best way possible. I mean, the worst question the best way possible." <laughs> anyway, so that kind of you know. And then, and then after that, I was like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna do this right. I'm gonna do an interview for her that um, that that is that is deserving of her stature and everything like that. She she just has such when I listen to her, she has such a almost like a refined old spirit style and everything like that. Just completely respectable woman. And I just love that about her. I really miss seeing that trait in people sometimes, and. Um, and so anyway, so I I uh, I go ahead and uh, decide that I'm going to put all this stuff together, and this is well before the convention even. And then eventually uh, I decided that I was going to try and give her the interview at the convention. Well, it never panned out for good reason because basically Everfree at this point was just doing a massive amount of interviews themselves uh, of people, and they're just this is right at the beginning, maybe not massive, but they're just starting, and they and they have effectively interviewed everybody that can be interviewed in the Pony fandom at this point, Everfree Radio. Um, and uh, so I go and I go ahead and I go to the convention, and uh, and basically just a, f- a week before, uh, you know, I'm ready to get there, maybe a couple weeks, uh, they just do a phenomenal interview of uh, Nicole Oliver. Asked her all the different questions. They didn't even just they didn't focus just on the Pony stuff, and um, and I thought that was really that was really good. Um, so I decided that you know I don't. I don't need to do this. That wouldn't make sense. Um, so, you know, whatever. Uh, but uh, at this point, I've just become so enchanted by her character. I've researched her. I've done all these different things. I was just, it was just wonderful to see what kind of, what kind of person she is. And I'm like, i got to make her art. And I only have, like, a week to do this. Um, so I go I go ahead, and I basically just, like, balls to the wall, draw, draw this... Uh, draw this picture for her and everything like that and that's where I gave it to her and the reason why she probably I probably got the reaction I did from her is because she is she is such a motherly person and uh and she goes and I, I tell her that you know this this drawing special because this is this kind of broke my year-long hiatus that I've had in art if not even longer than that and that uh thanks to you and ponies and all that kind of stuff I actually you know uh, I mean, I I I think I want to do art again, and I want to, and I found a reason, and this is fun. This is great. I mean, this is also kind of just for me. I don't really need justification to make these images. I can just enjoy doing them because it's just that fun. Um, and since then, I have I have been drawing. Um, like I said, I just recently finished that one 60-hour drawing, <laughs> um, often interrupted by my schedule and art and everything that's interrupted by by work and everything like that, which I don't currently have. Anyway, so, uh, so anyway, so that, uh, that happened, um, that was a big thing, and then, uh, so I guess what kind of happened there is I guess I made a big enough splash at that convention to where, like, they actually, like, I, I guess, uh, you know, afterward I got signings and I talked to them, and I don't know where this information got disseminated or how or whatever, but, like, apparently, um, 
uh, when what was going on is that uh, 